Hey everybody, welcome to the Dreamer's Edge podcast. With Nicholas, I'm the gaming correspondent for Idiomatic. And I am Dimitri, uh, editor-in-chief of Idiomatic and movie critic. And you may be wondering, where's the rest of the crew? How come it's the don't fuck with the original uh, guys here? Well, that's because we've taken over. Yep, we rule. Yes, <laughs> and you... And why? Because we're not done talking about Star Trek. We're just not done. And so, we talked about the original crew in a previous episode, and now we're going to talk about the next generation. Yes. (laughs) But we've got a lot of material to get through, so let's not waste any time and start with Star Trek Generations. Yes. Um, Basically passing the torch from the old crew to the next generation crew. Yeah. In a story that's so weak and has so many plot holes, you could drive a truck through it. it through <laughs> them, it's terrible. Ah, uh, I, 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 I can't. We can't talk about this movie without bitching about it for like two, half an hour. It's no, I agree. I, I think to a certain degree we should skip it. Here's what I'll say: a, it's not Star Trek because it only stars the two captains, and that's a problem. It's a Star Trek. Both iterations of it no, are about teamwork. There's the crew, the crew that completely destroys the ship, you know, and then the captain that saves the day. But the rest of the crew, they just fuck up and destroy the Enterprise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the movie's not about them at all. Yeah, you exactly. Know? They're, 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 like you said, they're almost antagonists. At that point. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And and the two captains, the voices are wrong. Like Kirk is wrong, and and and, and Picard, Picard is not an action star. He's no. he's a philosopher. He's a diplomat. He is not an action star, and that's that's something that's going to come back in every movie of the next generation. You're so right. Picard, the action star, does not work. The guy is like sixty with a bad hip. All right, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> I'm, I, you know, I and he has a big Shakespearean voice that comes out. I know. Of his head. It's like no. If you want action stuff, have Riker or Worf do the action stuff. They keep shoehorning Worf that left the series, you know, <laughs> to be in Deep Space Nine. They keep shoehorning him back, like in lazier, lazier way every time. Have him do the action stuff. That's what he's there for. Mm. Picard, he's there to be the smart one, the, you know, the philosophical one, you know, the diplomat. That's what we like about him. We yeah. don't want him kicking ass. That's not how it works. No, yeah, you want to see, like, his his character is that of a decision maker, not of an impulsive uh, go-getter. Yeah. Uh, which is the difference between Kirk and, and, and Picard. And so if you're going to put them together in the same movie... Mm-hmm play off that difference instead of writing the same action character from two different perspectives. Yeah. I just like also, you know, how are you going to bring the two captains together? Are they going to do like, use their experience as captain to solve problems? No, they're going to fight. They're going to punch Malcolm McDowell. You know, that, that's basically what they are. Yeah. Punch an even older guy. <laughs> and aside from it being bad the worst sin it is is that it's a lost opportunity because you hear you have two captains of star trek who have already generated quite a bit of debate as to who is the better captain yeah have them compete as captains have the idea of the optimistic go-getter who will accept no rules except his own like get under the skin of the rationalist uh, a philosopher going like well we have to consider the impact of what we're doing i don't have to do that yeah. i'm kirk i'm gonna kick ass and take names that's what i do like exactly that would have been awesome yeah but no it's mostly like you know let's go kick his ass it's like kirk was also a sad replacement like picard wanted to bring guinan with him to kick the bad guy's <laughs> ass at first it's like oh well you you can't come out with me all right i'll go get kirk instead it's uh, like oh that's terrible <laughs> And spoiler alert, they kill Kirk. Yeah, and they bury him under a pile of rocks. <laughs> it's, it's dignified and for a dignified gag. Not, not you know, it, 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 hey, hey, guys, there's Kirk and he died a hero. You know, let's bring him back to Starfleet so he get a hero's burial. Now I'm just under a pile of rock there. He'll be eaten by insects, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> terrible. It's just terrible. Yeah, no, it's just... Okay, look, I, I I keep repeating this, but like for all the great heroes that we've seen time and time again that have come to aboard ship, yeah. and certainly Kirk is somewhere in the top of that list mm-hmm. with Indiana Jones and James Bond. Yeah. Okay, these guys, they do not grow old and they do not die. No, they don't. They stay active for the next adventure. Mm-hmm. That's how you leave them. Kirk died twice in that movie. Twice! <laughs> <laughs> 
Ah, uh, all right, let's move on. This yeah, is depressing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> all right, well, let's move to First Contact. Yes, I like that movie when I first saw it. Yeah, me too. Um, the Borg. You, you can never go wrong with the Borg. People really shot on the you know, generation, so they were like, what can we do? Uh, that's like, foolproof. Yeah, <laughs> that's foolproof. People like the Borg. All right, let's, go to, let's do the Borg. Unfortunately, they had to mix that with time travel, which is kind of cheap a little bit. Basically, it's the Borg. They try to invade Earth, and when it fails, they travel through time to stop first contact, which is basically the first contact between humans and the Vulcans, which basically led to, you know, them expanding and going into space. Um, and yeah, the Enterprise, they, 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 they manage to travel through time as well, and they have to stop what the Borg is, the Borgs are doing. Yeah. Um, what I like about the time travel, I was going to say, mm-hmm. is, for once they travel at a time that doesn't exist yet and i thought that was clever because you know you see it all the time in time travel movies they always go either to your exact time or to a time that's iconic to you to your yeah. culture it's like this one where it's like here we're going back to that time which you know nothing about go <laughs> yes because that's a good point i didn't think of it that yeah and yeah, they meet uh, Cochrane, who's the guy that created the warp engine, mm. and they mess with his head so much. But they're and they're so clumsy about it. Yeah. like not in the writing. I mean, like the, it's played for laughs, and the yeah. characters are being uh, uh, deliberately stupid. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, can I shake your hands? Like you're, you're like the tenth person to ask me that. It's like you know, well, you're you're, you're like. You're the idol of so many people here. You know, they worship you. Uh, over here, there's going to be your statue. Yeah, and it's it's like the guy, he's like, he, he, he's free because he was only doing this for the money, basically. Yeah, yeah. That was like getting retired. And he cannot deal with all of this. And he's like, I'm not doing this anymore. And he tries to run away. <laughs> it is hilarious. <laughs> it, yeah, it's played for laughs and it gets a genuine laugh. Yeah, exactly. And again, it's the whole crew working together. Mm. Um. There's this plot. First of all, you have to solve the problem on the ground because the Borg kind of destroyed the ship, so they have to fix it. And the Borg kind of took over the Enterprise as well. Mm. So you have Picard and Data doing and their action thing on the ship, which yeah. is the part I like the least. I can see Picard wanting to do the action thing against the Borg because he got assimilated, so he wants... Yeah, they really hammer that nail there. Yeah. So Picard hates the Borg the same way that Kirk hates the Klingons. Unfortunately, in the series, there have been episodes with the Borgs after he got assimilated where he he, he kind of took it badly, but he he was not as crazy as he, you know, crazy Picard. So, okay, you know, he was fine those episodes, but, you know, it's kind of a pendulum thing. Now he's crazy again for the Borgs. That part, okay, I I had to deal with it. You know, it didn't ruin the movie for me. But I was like, okay, okay, you're kind of forgetting what you wrote. And, you know, I guess different writers didn't remember. But for the rest, you know, it, it's a good movie. It's enjoyable. Good action. Good good science fiction. Good Star Trek story, mm-hmm. I think. I um, I liked it a lot when it came out. Uh, mm-hmm. But I have to say it hasn't aged well. Like you mentioned, the, 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 the Picard behaving irrationally is a little bit over the top. Yeah. And this is the movie that establishes the central relationship that's going to be in every movie, which is Picard treating Data as his son. Yeah, you're right. And it actually is a relationship that works. It's beautiful because Picard is such a philosopher. Mm. So you get to see that side of Picard even through the action scenes. Yeah. And Data is just like this great big sponge that never judges or feels like he's being condescended upon. So it, it works well. Uh, the thing about it is... Um, is it isolates these two characters as the sole characters in the Star Trek franchise and all the other ones feel a little bit like here's something to do for you. Exactly. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. I, the, the funniest part of the scene where like Yenna Troy for some reason is the flight controller for the first war flight. And it's like what what makes her qualified to be the flight controller all of a sudden for that? I mean, seriously, people you know, they're working there is like, who's this chick all of a sudden? What is she <laughs> doing there? It, it's like you you and you know the two two co pilots are people. I think they're Riker and uh, Jordy. It's like mm-hmm. the two original co pilots must be pissed <laughs> about that. You know, I was going to be in the first you know first ever warp flight, and now these two assholes are taking my spot. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> it's true. That's jerky. I know. Hey, man, they idolize the guy, so they get to go on the flight, I guess. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, um, what's interesting about um, this movie is that Jonathan Frakes, who directed it, yeah, uh, he plays number one, uh, he, he directed it like a horror film. Like, there's a lot of, like, these sort of close angles, a lot of Dutch angles to 
and, and balance you. The, yeah. the Borg are presented as monsters, not these weird sci-fi creatures. Yeah. I'm a horror fan, so I like that filmmaking technique. I thought it was intense. It evoked emotion, which is nice in a movie. Yeah. Especially a Star Trek movie, because a lot of them had had trouble with that. That's true. Uh, but the problem with that is that it all also led to some modifications of the Borg concept, where they introduced the Queen Borg. Yeah. And the Queen Borg is like, she is controlling all of them, essentially. She's a queen, you know? Yeah. And it's sort of like, that's so much less interesting than the idea of a yeah. true collective. I know. Like, my mind can wrap around a true collective, but my mind can wrap around a queen, and so that makes them less interesting. All of I sudden. know. Now it's basically a queen, like a, like a hive, basically. Yeah. that There's a queen, and all the bees around her, you know, following it. But when you hear her say, at first, I am the Borg, and Data's like, what the hell? Oh, you, you're the Borg. But then you see her, and she's the queen, and she explains things like, oh, now, now I kind of get the Borg, and it's, mm. it's kind of boring. Yeah. yeah. Like, at that point, like, if you were going to do that, I would have preferred it. It was like, I'm V'ger. Like, I would have been like, yeah. fine. Your V'ger, that's a more interesting. Or at least make it like in the series where, you know, okay, you need one main bad guy to to, so, to relate to. So you're not all, it's not all monsters, you know, mm. and there's monsters. Make it like, you know, I'm I'm going to be the representative, you know, to talk to you. You know, they, they, like they did for Locutus, you know. And Seven of Nine was originally who they chose as their, the Borg was chosen mm. representative to talk to uh, the, the crew mm. of Voyager. Do it that way, you know, she's the representative. You don't have to make her the queen. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. But they wanted to defeat the Borg once and for all, and so that it's really climactic. Yeah, which but, they didn't, but whatever. Yeah, it, and it's also like, ah, uh, Yeah. Uh, and also, the actress that plays it, she plays it as the devil, essentially. Yeah. This sort of sultry, creepy, Cenobite. Very gross, thing. yeah. yeah. Mm. And it's sort of like, yeah, well, that's very Faustian, but who cares? I've yeah. seen this before. Yeah. And so the, the movie loses me because of that. It, it, okay. Because it robbed me of one of the coolest concepts of the new generation of Star Trek, the Borg. The Borg were interesting, and then this movie came along, and by the end of the movie, the Borg were no longer interesting. Yeah, I can see that. Mm. I mean, tell you, it's pretty fun yeah. all throughout. So what do you think about the next one, Insurrection? I hate the living crap out of it. Oh my I God. really do. First time I watched it, I liked it. Then I, 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 I just watched it again, and you know, you start noticing the plot holes. And you saw, look at it the third time, and you're like, this makes no sense. What is happening here? <laughs> but basically, it's the story is that there's a planet where people don't age. And the Federation and some aliens, they want to have, they have this technology where they can collect the radiation from that planet and make that everybody, you know, in the universe doesn't age. Well, basically, mm -hmm. everybody in the Federation, then they stop aging. And Picard's like, no, that's not right. You're going to kill the people on the planet, so, you know. I'm going to defend them because it's their planet. And he basically says, screw Starfleet. And he goes to protect the people on the planet. It was like... But then it turns out that that's not quite what's happened. Exactly. Uh, basically, the aliens were people that were on that planet that basically got exiled. And they want revenge. Mm. So he, he was basically doing the right thing all along. Which is so not interesting, actually. It would have been so much better if he had been like the Kirk. He's like, I'm doing what I think is right. Mm. And... Again, that's not Picard, really, but no. you're right. It's not Picard. It's, you know, Picard followed orders, even though he was completely opposed to them in the series. Like, they're the orders. I know it sucks, but I have to follow them. And here it's like, no, this is wrong. And I could forgive him him doing that in First Contact because they, uh, they take the time to establish the orders as feeling unfair to the yeah. Enterprise. Yeah. And also him being already a little bit unbalanced. So, okay, he's going to act a little bit out of character because yeah. the board. But like in this one, it's like, again? Yeah. Well, there was a hot chick he liked on the planet. But no, this, this, this movie is not good. It has so many plot holes, even for you know, a sci-fi movie, that you just look at it and it's like, well, this makes no sense whatsoever. So I would just skip that one. Skip. Yeah, and it's the second movie in a row where Picard runs the show, he drives the story, and all the other ones just do comic relief stuff. Yeah. And it's like, I appreciated it in the first contact, because it was like, it's a way of doing it, that's fine. Yeah. But like, well, you can't do it twice in a row, though, you yeah. know? It's like, at some point, I, you know, I watch the series, I want to see the other characters, too. Yeah. They try and give Riker and um, Jordy, you know, they have to exit the nebula to contact Starfleet, and they're trying to do the, the ship battle, but it just feels, she feels very hollow, because... 
Star Trek was never about ship battles, especially the next generation. It wasn't ever about, you know, ships shooting and destroying each other. Except on sweeps and season finales. Uh, yeah, but those were like, you know, he did, Picard didn't want to, but he had to. You know, you see, you knew the Romulans, like the Warbirds, like the really tough ships. You never saw the Enterprise destroying Warbirds, like, yeah. Oh, no, it's just a you. ship made for exploration, so. Yeah, yeah so it, it was it was never like, you know, we're badass, let's destroy stuff. It was, you know, we're, we're diplomats, let's, let's try and work this out. Okay, yeah, we have a very powerful ship if we need to, mm. but let's work this out. And here it's like, I did not buy a ticket to a Star Trek movie to watch a ship battle. Mm. You know, that's, that's what Star Wars is for, honestly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but and, but for me that wasn't the problem with that movie for me it's the sitcom elements it's the tv show elements it's the like okay here's what it is when we go back to our adolescence Worf gets zits and <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh their boobs are firmer you know the yeah. woman you know it's like yeah you're not showing anything so don't, don't kid yourself <laughs> <laughs> it's also show don't tell come on it's a visual <laughs> medium <laughs> Um, it's also the whole metaphor about being younger and trying to be young forever and how that's that's an empty goal. And, uh, you know, you have the evil extraterrestrials who are still trying to be young forever without the magical wavelength, wavelength yeah. that allows them to do that. So they do like these really grotesque um, plastic surgeries on themselves. Yeah. I was like, eh, yeah, we as a society are always trying to stay young and we should consider just aging with grace, blah, 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 blah. It's a very Hollywoodian sort of yes, concern, true. you know. That was never a start, you know. Death, I, I, I don't know how, but in series, death was never like, you know, oh, no, I'm going to die. It was like, it's a natural, you live, you know, you die. It's, 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 it's part of what life is. It was never like the big concern of, you know, we need to avoid death at all costs. Uh, you know, aging is bad. That was never a theme in Star Trek ever. Mm. Yeah, no, it's it's just like <laughs> it's the sort of concern that feels a lot more important to a Hollywood producer than it does for most people. I find yeah. it's not not that we're not afraid of dying or getting old. We are, yeah. but it's just it's not at the top of our list exactly. of concerns. Really. Exactly. Mm. Yeah, the least said about that movie, uh, the better. Because I I th I mean it's better than Generations, but barely. Yeah. Oh, people were like, oh, it's the one that broke the even odd pattern. I was like, nah. At first, I believed that, but then I was like, no, no, it didn't. It really didn't. No, I think the next one is the one that broke the even odd pattern in terms of, like, everybody hated the crap out of that even number one. Yes, that is true. Um, Nemesis. Hmm. Uh, basically, Picard meets... I keep saying King basically every time I, I describe those. I need to stop doing that. <laughs> um, you're going to cut those basically's, right? No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Picard uh, is... Kind of lured close to Romulus, the okay, Romulan space, where he meets the clone of himself. His clone that took power is now uh, the, the Praetor of Romulus, and he wants to capture Picard to get a blood transfusion so he can live and do other evil stuff. And it was weird. I could not get around the motivation of the bad guy. That's the only thing I didn't quite like about the movie because. Okay, he becomes the leader of Romulus, and then he doesn't want to lead anymore. He, he he captures Picard to get the blood transfusion, but he doesn't want the blood anymore. It's like, what are you doing? What exactly are you trying to do? Eventually, he just wants to shoot Picard from his ship. Mm -hmm. That's what he wants. And, you know, well, you could have done that from the start, you know. <laughs> it's just, it just feels like a giant waste of, what are you trying to do, man? Well, I didn't have that problem, because I actually really thought, that part worked. I thought the actor was good, and I thought oh, the motivation. Oh, yeah, really, Sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, he is. And the motivations are complex and weird, and that sort of made it more attractive to me. The idea being that he was cloned by the Romulans because Picard has become the symbol of ultimate leadership. They wanted to replace Picard, actually, and it was a plot to replace Picard with the clone. But right. then, they oh yeah, no, like, that's why they put him yeah. in the slave planet. Yeah. Then it's like that's never going. It's never going to work. So let's just shove him in the slave planet. Slave planet to die. Yeah. Not, not kill him, just shut him there to die. It's just weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the idea... Oh, yeah. So the idea of his motivations, though, is that he's... He had a destiny which he could not achieve. And, uh, and so he was nurtured for something that didn't pan out. But he was also born with a genetic destiny to become the man that would be Picard. Yeah. And he doesn't want to do that either he, he's sort of a clone going like i want to be my own person and nobody's letting me do that and this is I, i'm going to do the exact opposite of whatever is expected of me and that's why his motivation seems so all over the place because he keeps switching and swerving because he just wants to prove that he is and that he's not 
just an echo of that other guy. Okay. And so he keeps doing the exact opposite of what you'd expect him to do uh, and, and what seems like the rational thing to do. That's all nice and good, but, I mean, he needs the blood of Picard to survive. I mean, that that's established. He's going to mm. die without it. So at least do that. And then, you know, s- swerve and do whatever you want, but live <laughs> at least. <laughs> I, I, I think they clearly established that he is more than a little bit suicidal. Uh, he doesn't enjoy life very much. That guy. well, that's true. Well, you would you would think now that he's free from the slave thing, he would start enjoying life a little bit more. You'd, you'd think, but, but apparently not. <laughs> you know, especially he's the leader of Romulus now. You'd think, you know, come on, you know, live it up. Yeah, yeah, that that's not what they went with that guy. And but it leads to this cool confrontation at the end where uh, Picard starts acting the same way he does, where he's like, where he goes like, "Oh man, this guy knows my all my moves because he has sort of like the same way of thinking I do because he's me." Yeah. And the kid's like, "I'm going to do the exact opposite. It's not going to help the situation, but I'm just going to get that sense of satisfaction yeah. that I'm not just being played throughout the entire thing, which is exactly what his clone has been doing the whole time. So there's sort of an irony of like subtle fail in yeah. his actions, which." I thought was cool. Like, I thought that was a great idea. The problem with all of that, though, is that all of this would have worked if it had been a clone of Kirk, not a clone of Picard. Why you say that? Because Kirk is the character who goes, I am beyond rules. Yeah. I am me, and I see no lose scenario, and I care about everything, and I'm going to go at, at this with my heart. That's the sort of character that if he's twisted by slavery... And by knowing that he's a clone would be like, I want to be my own person. I'm going to destroy everything just to be my own person. Yeah. It's also the sort of guy that goes like, that dude keeps knowing all my moves. I'm going to ram into him just because that's crazy and that's me. That's yeah. something Kirk does, not Picard. Yeah. They wrote a Kirk story and shoved Picard in it. I guess so. But again, it's it's movie Picard. The, the movie yeah. Picard that does action things and, you know, crazy stuff. Uh, again... You, that's probably why he he did all that the the the, the ship ramming thing. It's like yeah, that that movie Picard would do that. Yeah, something crazy. <laughs> and again, again, confrontation at the end. Like oh, I need to confront him, you know, because that's what I have to do mm. alone. Apparently, except uh, with Data. And Data Data comes afterwards. You mm. know, he jumps from ship to ship. And it was a pretty cool scene where he's like, okay, this is me. The ship is over there. There's a vacuum of space. Physics tells me I'm going to make it. And he just yeah, that, that was runs super and cool. Jump. And he's like, wow, that's awesome. And he doesn't have to breathe, so it works perfectly fine. And it's mm-hmm. like, oh, that's awesome. But, you know, Picard, I need to confront him, like, alone. And it's like, you know, first of all, send Worf. <laughs> <laughs> Worf can fight. Or, you know, Riker. That's what Riker was there for in the, the series. He was supposed to be the Kirk character that oh, fought, you know. he just got married and everything. Come on, you forget a break. I guess. So, you know, send somebody that can fight, or, you know, more than one person, but, you know, he's my clone, I have to, you know, confront him. Why? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I mean, on a purely emotional level, I, I see the reasoning. I guess. It's but... just that you're risking a lot of people's lives to get that sense of closure. Exactly, you know I mean? yeah. You know, so, it, it was weird, and... Again, again, other characters had nothing to do with all, like Jordi and Deanna Troy. Deanna Troy got married. Yes, she said that that was her whole thing. Yeah. And no, no, she, this she is... got raped again. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what she does in her series. Uh, now, this was all um, Picard and Data. Again, yeah. they, 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 like the same way that Picard has a clone, they give Data a clone as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow, that's bad. They give him Didn't a... even knows that. Oh, no? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. That's terrible. <laughs> Oh, God, that makes it even worse. Ah, oh, thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> the problem with that is that Data already has a doppelganger. <laughs> yeah. He's a firmly established character in the series that every fan of the show remembers quite well. Yeah. And so, like, just shove him in there. Like, if you need him to be a blank slate, just say that in between movies... Uh, he got his chip erased and he's a blank slate. But, like, use the same robot. Yeah, exactly. Or, you know, he pretends he has his chip erased or something and, you know, it turns out he's actually, you know, kind of an asshole that is working with the Romulan guy or something. Mm. You know, I would make it actually good. Just that, oh, no, he's a clone that, you know, actually, I guess was built after, before Ada, but whatever. He was yeah. one of the ro- androids that didn't quite work. And it's like, oh, wow, you, you, that, you, made, you made the movie even worse, man. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, and it was so confusing because I kept watching the movie and I kept 
waiting for the robot to turn out to be, you know, the established yeah. data or brother. And that moment never came. And it was just so confusing to me because yeah. I had watched the entire movie from that angle. And it's my fault. Like, I brought that baggage yeah, I to know. the movie. I know. But... Oh, how dare you bring baggage from the next generation <laughs> series to a next generation movie? How dare you? Ah. Uh. But I was expecting that too. At least somebody mentioned, you know, is is that lore? You yeah. know, is that is that the character? And somebody say, no, he's disassembled. The pieces are, you know, right here or something. Or we <laughs> right here, in my pocket. <laughs> exactly. No, we've disassembled him. It's not him. The, 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 you know, and show the pieces that, that, that there's lore's right here. He's, you know, that's not him. Anybody mentioned it. They all act like, you know, this android there is like, oh, it's perfectly normal. You know, it's like... You've had one before that caused trouble. Seriously. Yeah, but Brent Spinner wrote the screenplay, so it's his fault. You'd think Brent Spinner would know about lore. <laughs> yes, he played lore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Having said that, yeah, I kind of like the movie. As a pure visceral ride, the action sequences are pretty freaking awesome. Yes. Again, it's ships fighting, which is not what I watched Star Trek for. But yeah, when they're trying to fight the, you know, get, shoot that the cloaked ship, and it, they, they're missing a bunch of times because you know they, the ship keeps moving as well, and then they get help from the Romulans, and they're trying to triangulate its position with the shooting. That was pretty cool. I'll admit that. Yeah, uh, when Picard and uh, Data are into the enemy ship and are fighting their way to the final boss, essentially. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's cool. Like, there's a lot of inventiveness in the way they, they fight. Like, because, you know, Star Trek f battle sequence tend to be boring because it's like phasers, pew, pew, pew. Yeah. And, and no, this movie finds things for them to do with uh, vehicles and jumping around and stuff. It's, like, it's, it's all fun. Uh, the driving drama of uh, Picard slash Kirk and yeah. his clone is actually compelling uh, in terms of in, in in terms of the psychological and philosophical implications of how I both beings would feel and the movie does explore that so all of this works is just in terms of the overall Star Trek mythos and th the themes of Star Trek it's sort of like it's this sort of odd animals like what is that one doing here yeah i mean the, again that is also uh, the trick in me that you know likes to you know when i start getting bored or confused about the movie you start you know looking at this is not consistent this is not <laughs> and there was there was a lot of that in that oh, one too. Yeah. i'm not going to bore, bore the audience with you know all of them but it was like no this makes no no this is stupid this is not how it happened it's like oh so yeah then, then you're listening to that you're waiting for 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 the, the android to say i'm lore and then you you're you're confused about the villain it made it made for a huge mess for me yeah, no, I know. I mean, like, if you are a Trek fan, and if you're not, how did you listen to all of this and stay awake? Yeah. <laughs> um, then yeah, there's no way you're gonna like this. There's no way it's it, no. it's not Star Trek, and it's it's a little bit insulting to Star Trek to be blunt. Yeah. But if you're just a casual fan of space opera stuff, yeah, this this movie's pretty freaking cool. I guess. You know, I guess, and that's why they they made the movie for that kind of audience, so they can you know, not just get the trickies, but everybody. It's just yeah, but you you want to strike that balance, and exactly. That movie doesn't, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not like First Contact did. Yeah, 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 exactly. So that's it for the Star Trek universe. If you have any questions, comments, thoughts about Star Trek: The Next Generation, um, you may write us at mail at idiomatic dot com or post a comment at idiomatic dot com. We're also on Facebook. We're also on Twitter. We're also on iTunes. Please write us a review. It helps us a lot, believe it or not. And we'll talk to you next time. Yeah. Terrible. Ah, uh, I, 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 I can't. We can't talk about this movie without bitching about it for like two, half an hour. It's no, I agree. I, I think to a certain degree we should skip it. Here's what I'll say. A, it's not Star Trek because it only stars the two captains, and that's a problem. It's a, Star Trek, both iterations of it no, are about teamwork. There's the crew, the crew that completely destroys the ship, you know, and then the captain that saves the day. But the rest of the crew, they just fuck up and destroy the Enterprise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, the movie's not about them at all. Yeah, you know, exactly. They're, 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 like you said, they're almost antagonists at that point. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And and the two captains, the voices are wrong. Like Kirk is wrong, and and and, and Picard, Picard is not an action star.
He's yeah. he's a philosopher. He's a diplomat. He is not an action star, and that's that's something that's going to come back in every movie of the next generation. You're so right. Picard, the action star, does not work. The guy is like sixty with a bad hip. All right, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> I'm, I, you know, and he has a big Shakespearean voice that comes out. I know. Like, it's like no. If you want action, it's just to get a hero's burial. No, I'm just gonna, under a pile of rock there. He'll be eaten by insects. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> terrible. It's just terrible. Yeah. No. It's just okay, look. I, I I keep repeating this, but like for all the great heroes that we've seen time and time again that have come to worship. Yeah. And certainly Kirk is somewhere in the top of that list. Mm-hmm. With Indiana Jones and James Bond. Yeah. Okay. These guys, they do not grow old and they do not die. No, they don't. They stay active for the next adventure. Mm-hmm. That's how you leave them. Kirk died twice in that movie. Twice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Let's move on. This yeah, is depressing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> all right. Well, let's move to First Contact. Yes. I like that movie when I first saw it. Yeah, me too. Um, the Borg. You, you can never go wrong with the Borg. People really shot on you know generations, so they were like... What can we do? Uh, that's like, foolproof. Yeah, right? that's foolproof. People like the Borg. All right, let's go. To, let's do the Borg. Unfortunately, they had to mix that with time travel, which is kind of cheap a little bit. Basically, it's the Borg. They try to invade Earth, and when it fails, they travel through time to stop first contact. Hey, everybody! Welcome to the Dreamers Edge podcast. With Nicholas, I'm the gaming correspondent for Idiomatic. And I am Dimitri, uh, editor-in-chief of Idiomatic and movie critic. Now you may be wondering, where's the rest of the crew? How come it's the don't fuck with the original uh, guys here? Well, that's because we've taken over. Yep, we rule. Yes. <laughs> and, you, and why? Because we're not done talking about Star Trek. We're just not done. And so we talked about the original crew in a previous episode. And now we're going to talk about the next generation. Yes. <laughs> but we've got a lot of material to get through, so let's not waste any time and start with Star Trek Generations. Yes. Um, Basically passing the torch from the old crew to the next generation crew. Yeah. In a story that's so weak, it has so many plot holes, you could drive a truck through it. it through <laughs> them, it's terrible. Have Riker or Worf do the action stuff. They keep shoehorning Worf that left the series, you know, <laughs> to be in Deep Space Nine. They keep shoehorning him back, like, in lazier, lazier way every time. Have him do the action stuff. That's what he's there for. Mm. Picard, he's there to be the smart one, the, you know, the philosophical one, you know, the diplomat. That's what we like about him. We yeah. don't want him kicking ass. That's not how it works. No, yeah, you want to see, like... His his character is that of a decision maker, not of an impulsive uh, go getter. Yeah, uh, which is the difference between Kirk and 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 Picard. And so, if you're gonna put them together in the same movie, play off that difference instead of writing the same action character from two different perspectives. Yeah, I, I just like also you know how are you gonna bring the two captains together? Are they gonna do like use their experience as captain to solve problems? No, they're gonna fight. They're gonna punch. Malcolm McDowell, you know, that, that, that's basically what they are. Yeah. Punch an even older guy. <laughs> and aside from it being bad, the worst thing it is, is that it's a lost opportunity. Because you hear you have two captains of Star Trek who have already generated quite a bit of debate as to who is the better captain. Yeah. Have them compete as captains. Have the idea of the optimistic go-getter who will accept no rules except his own like get under the skin of the rationalist uh, uh, philosopher going like well we have to consider the impact of what we're doing i don't have to do that yeah. i'm kirk i'm gonna kick ass and take names that's what i do like exactly that would have been awesome yeah but no it's mostly like you know let's go kick his ass it's like Kirk was also a sad replacement. Like, Picard wanted to bring Guinan with him to kick the bad guy's <laughs> ass at first. It's like, oh, well, you, you can't come out with me? All right, I'll go get Kirk instead. It's uh, like, oh, that's terrible. <laughs> and spoiler alert, they kill Kirk. Yeah, and they bury him under a pile of rocks. <laughs> it's, it's, it's dignified and for a dignified character. Not, not you know, it, it, hey, hey, guys, there's Kirk and he died a hero. Let's bring him back to Starfleet. 